Hello, it's Justin Williams Savoy. Thank you for joining me. Um, it is December 2020, year of our Lord, here on a weekend, and um, just creating some content for you all. So I'm sitting around here, um, kind of low lighting. I have a little Christmas tree. Um, it's looking beautiful to me. Um, over in the corner, some pre raphaelite art surrounded by some of my very favorite books in this room, some more books in the bedroom. Um, some of you have heard my lament about losing a large portion of my library. However, this is a book that I have kept for a rather long time. I am so pleased to have this. And, you know, just a little insight to the guy that I am. I'm sitting around here and watching YouTube. You know, before in the past, I, I went through long periods of time of not even having a television because I'm just such a bookworm. I had a library card and a nice comfortable chair. I worked labor work during the day doing landscaping and uh, gardening and uh, at times during college and before I went to university, I went to a junior college and I did a lot of um, strenuous labor work and uh, I'd come home to the comfort of my little cozy place and my um, books, and I just would love to read. And, you know, I got into um, studying about Byzantium um, by studying art and looking at some books um, on Hagia Sophia and Istanbul and um, Byzantine theology and liturgy. And through my interest in uh, the Orthodox Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, Greek and Russian primarily in my area, I attended a small Russian parish. Um, and it was Rokor, I believe, and then um, uh, Orthodox Monastery in Edna, California, at the Center for Traditionalist Orthodox Studies. I enjoyed um, different stuff, Constantine Carvarnos and the Byzantine studies and looking at some of the stuff that he wrote and... Um, Harvard, but what a better person than John Julius Norwich, and that's what I was trying to say um, today, backing up, I've just been also watching YouTube um, before I got on the tangent about not having a television, um, enjoying myself watching um, some interviews with John Julius Norwich, there is a wonderful one about Christmas, which I recommend to you, um, I'm not going to get into the theological and religious implications of Christmas and um, what some of the um, symbology is and what it means and any of that, um, or my reasoning why I um, do have a tree. And I tend to rejoice and celebrate the nativity of Christ the Lord um, according to the old Julian calendar as opposed to the Gregorian calendar. And that's just, I'm not going to get into all that. Hey, it does kind of correspond with what we are talking about here, though, huh? Byzantium. And um, there's a cool video with John Julius Norwich um, speaking about Mount Athos and the austerity of Mount Athos and his time there and some of his observances and Byzantine time and all the monasteries being on different time clocks um, than us. Um, very, very interesting. But what I want to say is he's kind of a legend in his own right. Um, so you can look him up through your favorite search engine or what have you. Um, and, and learn more about him if you don't know about him. Um, so, yeah, a short history of Byzantium, John Julius Norwich, based on the great three-volume work, a grand and exciting story, the Wall Street Journal. I like the way that he does research and presents um, historical information. Um, that's me. I just kind of like his style. I just like his way of existing in some ways as well. Um, but anyways... Norwich is always on the lookout for the small but revealing details, all that he recounts in a style that consistently entertains the New York Times book review. In this magisterial adoption of his epic three-volume history of Byzantium, John Julius Norwich chronicles the world's longest-lived Christian empire, beginning with Constantine the Great, who in A.D. 330 made up Christianity, the religion of the realm, and then transferred its capital to the city that would become, bear his name. Norwich follows the course of 11 centuries of Byzantine, Byzantine statescraft and warfare, politics and theology, manners and art, 
In the pages, A Short History of Byzantium, we encounter mystics and philosophers, eunuchs and barbarians, and rulers of fantastic erudition, piety, and degeneracy. We enter the life of an empire that could create some of the world's most transcendent religious art, and then destroy it in the convulsions of fanaticism, stylishly written and overflowing with drama, pathos, and wit. Here is the matchless account of a lost civilization and its magnificent cultural legacy. Strange and fascinating, filled with drollery and horror, Boston Globe. Cover design, Chin Yi Lai. Kli. Cover image, Scala Art Resource, New York. Yeah, and I had a lot of um, Orthodox and also um, Byzantine... Um, <clears throat> Um, art books at one time. I'm fairly limited on um, what I have now, but um, phot photography books of um, also um, um, Hagia Sophia and um, some of the restoration of frescoes and um, iconography um, there is as as fascinating to look at to have an understanding of um, some of Byzantine architecture and art and. Um, what's not? But anyways, moving along. International acclaim for John Julius Norwich's A Short History of Byzantium. Magnificent. The history brims with humanity, historical understanding, and unrelented drama. Publishers Weekly. Norwich is brilliant. He writes like the most cultivated modern diplomat, attached by a freak of time to the Byzantine court, the independent, vivid and entertaining. This is is history expounded like the first-class conversation of a sprightly recontour who responds to his enthusiasms as they seize him with each fresh turn of the story. The Sunday Times London. The best narrative history available today of an empire as fascinating as it is important to the spectator. In its human, even its contemplating humanity, it's witty and it tells a remarkable history with boundless zest, Daily Telegraph, London. Superbly enjoyable and brilliantly colorful prose enlivened by his gift for droll understatement. Norwich brings the complex subject to vivid life. Kirkus Reviews. <clears throat> also by John Julius Norwich. History. The Normans in the South. The Kingdom in the Sun, 1120-94. Reissued in one volume, The Normans in Sicily. The History of Venice, The Rise of the Two Empire, A History of Venice, The Greatness and the Fall, reissued in one volume, A History of Venice, Byzantium, The Early Centuries, Byanz Byanz Byzantium, The Apogee, uh, Byzantium, The Decline and Fall, Travel, Mount Athos, by Reversibly Sirwell, Rearisby, with Rearisby Sirwell, Sahara, A Taste for Travel and an Anthology, Venice, A Traveler's Companion, Miscellaneous, The Architecture of Southern England, Fifty Years of Glen Disborn, Christmas Crackers, 1970-79, More Christmas Crackers, 1980-89. John Julius Norwich, A Short History of Byzantium. John Julius Norwich was born in 1929. He was educated in Canada at Eton, at the University of Strasbourg, and at Oxford. When he took a degree in French and Russian in 1912, he joined the Foreign Service, serving in the embassies of Belgrade and Beirut, among other posts. In 1964, he resigned from the service in order to write. He has also published A History of Venice and A Taste for Travel and two volumes on the medieval Norman Kingdom of Sicily. Lord Norwich, chairman of the Venice in Pearl Fund, is an active member of the House of Lords. <clears throat> A Short History of Byzantium, John Julius Norwich. Vintage Books, a division of Random House Inch, Incorporated, uh, New York. Copyright 1997. Mm -hmm. And contents. A list of illustrations, maps, family trees, preface, introduction, part one, the early centuries. One, Constantine the Great to 337. Two, Julian the Apostate, 337 through 63. 
3, The Empire at Bay, 363 through 95, 4, The Fall of the West, 395 through 493, 5, The Rise of Justinian, 493 through 540, 6, Justinian, The Last Years, 540 through 65, 7, The First Crusader, 565 through 641, 8, The Heraclean Lion, 641 through 711, 9, Iconoclasm, 7, 11 through 802, Part 2, The Apogee, The Images Restored, 802 through 56, Of Patriarchs and Plots, 857 through 67, The Macedonian and the Sage, 867 through 912, The Gentle Usurper, 912 through 48, The Scholar Emperor, 945 through 63, The Tale of Two Generals, 963 through 76, the Bulgar Slayer, 976 through 1025. The Decline Begins, 1025 through 55. Massacre, 1055 through 81. Contents, the decline, Part 3, The Decline and Fall. Alexis Comnenus, 1081 through 1118. John the Beautiful, 1118 through 43. Manuel Comnenus, 1143 through 80. The Fourth Crusade, 1180 through 1205. Exile and Homecoming, 1205-61. The Eng Eng Even Threat, 1261-82. The Two Adronachi, 1282-341. The Reluctant Emperor, 341-54. The Sultan's Vassal, 335 or 1354-91. The Appeal to Europe, 1391-1448. The Fall, 1448-53. Epilogue, List of Emperors. The Muslim Sultans, List of Popes, Bibliography, and Index. List of Illustrations, I'm not going to read that. I'll just let it sit here for a moment so you could see that. And um, here's some more illustrations. More illustrations. Maps and family trees. Let's just take a look at those. <laughs> the maps. Bulgaria. Great way to do maps, in my opinion, for a paperback, especially. Anatolia and Armenia, the Mediterranean world, and here is some of these family trees for you. I'm just going to do it like this so you can see those, uh-huh, and the family of Leo one, the family of Leo three. Families of Justinian and Theodoric. The family of Tiberius Constantine. The family of Heraclius. The Amorian dynasty. The Macedonian dynasty. <laughs> Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that honey and nuts. Neo charge it all here it's doing this. Well I'm sitting around rotting in this mortal coil. Might as well have a little bit of an enjoyment in my uh, pseudo hermitage here. Huh? So this one goes from here. This is the princes of Antioch and kings of Sicily. <laughs> the Latin emperors at Constantinople.
Very thorough, as you can see. Uh, I really like this. I like the way that he does things. It's been a long time since I read this. <clears throat> Year, it's probably half of my lifetime, at least. I don't know. Um, uh, sometimes I dip and take a little look into things. Um, I got this around the time it came out, or shortly after. Um, so, yeah. The Early Centuries, Part 1. Constantine the Great. Can't go wrong reading that. Let's look at a few of the pictures. And then, um... Uh, da, 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 da. For black and whites, I like them quite a bit. <laughs> Guess you got to be into this kind of stuff, you know? Um, yeah, if you're one of my viewers and you're not, I don't know um, what you would be doing watching this video, but it's cool. I hope you enjoy and that you learn something um, from this but Byzantium. I mean, um, inside of a Byzantine church is as close as you're going to get to the heavenlies. The Rise of Justinian. There's some more pictures. I'm just going to thumb through and let's take a look at some more and then wrap up the video, huh? Something to do anyways. Kind of, sun's coming out a little bit. I don't know what I'll do, if I'll even leave. It's a weird world out there right now and um, I'm enjoying myself, you know? I don't want to be like um, uh, just a total shut-in. Nature is good. The Virgin and Child Ivory Statue to 11th and 12th centuries, one of the very... Rare examples of post-iconoclastic sculpture in the round. Yeah, but, you know, it's just my personality type. I just enjoy the intellectual life. I'm really just kind of stuck in my own little world, as they often say. But I'm happy there. And later on today, three of my sons are going to come over here. The little guys, Istanbul, St. Sophia, with minarets added after the Turkish conquest. Yeah, so um, for now, I'm just happy to make this for you before I switch into daddy mode and hang out with my children. Such a blessing. It says in like the Psalms that sons, they are an inheritance of the Lord. I might say children in your NIV. King James 11 says sons. I'm just going to run with that anyways. <laughs> uh... But yeah, so I love spending time with them, and um, my sons, they're named after different saints that um, correspond to this particular interest of mine, and just to the Christian East in general. Um, but um, yeah, so before I do that and meet up with them, I probably have some grocery shopping, unfortunately, uh, I have to do, and then... Um, I'm going to look forward to a very peaceful evening with some of my children as we're moving towards um, the date when most people in North America celebrate Christmas uh, holiday and the New Year. And then after that, I have the nativity uh, to look forward to. And it's so cool with today's technology. I was just thinking how I can watch um, stuff on YouTube, especially during this time when it's like a lot of us are isolated and quarantined, it will be nice, but I am able to, God willing, watch um, different um, activities in the Eastern Church that goes with the um, old calendar um, when we move to the Feast of the Nativity. Anyways, I'm kind of I'm going off into, I was up very early this morning. Um, but I hope that you found um, this enjoyable. And I look forward to providing more content for you in the future. And so I just want to wrap this up. I'm Justin William Savoy. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Uh, at least it's afternoon here. And I um, thank you to my supporters. I love doing this. So I want to be able to provide you with more content in the future. 
there's ways to support me, um, so, um, the best way to contact me is savoyjustin123 at gmail.com, that's S-U-V-O-Y-J-U-S-T-I-N at 123 at gmail.com, excuse me, um, and, um, comment below if you have any questions for me, comment, please do, I enjoy feedback, and, um, I will be making more videos with actually me on them talking to you, but for now, I'm just going to keep going forward with this. I'm having a good time, and I hope that you enjoy the content as well. Thank you so much. Okay, goodbye.